We've been solving one-dimensional kinematics problems most of the quarter. Now we're getting ready to introduce two-dimensional kinematics problems. In other words, projectile motion. Let's start off with two-dimensional kinematics the same way we did with one-dimensional kinematics with a motion diagram. If you remember what a motion diagram is, a dot represents the location of our object at some instant in time. It's like a light flashes and we can see where the object is and then it goes dark and we don't know where the object is and then the light flashes again and it's over here now and we put a dot there and then the goes dark we don't know where the object is and the light flashes again and it's over here now we put a dot there. Let's take a look at a two-dimensional motion diagram for an object being launched at an angle like this. So at t equals zero Where's our object? It's at the origin. And it has some velocity in this direction. Let's not worry about that right now. One second later, our strobe light goes off. Where's our object? It's over here now. One second later, our object is here. One second later, our object is here. And one second later, it reaches its peak and it starts its way down. So one second later, it would be here. And at t equals eight seconds, it's back at the same height it was launched from. We can project this motion diagram onto the x-axis and see the x-motion. What would the x-motion look like? It looks like uniform motion, like constant motion, zero acceleration in the x-direction. And that makes sense because when something is flying through the air, what's the only force acting on it? the force of gravity if we're ignoring air resistance. So if air is not pushing on it left or right, if the only force acting on it is gravity, that's toward the center of the Earth, nothing, there's no force that can change its horizontal motion. If we project this motion diagram onto the y-axis, we get this. This is on the way up. And then on the way down, I'm going to repeat t equals 4, 5, and at 8 seconds it's back on the ground again. Now at any one of these points, we can break up the velocity into x and y components. So if this is the velocity vector at the instant t equals zero, we could break that up into an x component and a y component. We can do the same thing at t equals one second. And what you'll notice is that the x component is the same. The y component changes because there's acceleration in the y direction. And we can break up v2 into its x and y components. The x component is exactly the same. The y component is getting smaller and smaller. And when it hits the highest point, it's only traveling horizontally. The only component is horizontal. V sub x is equal to V total because V sub y is zero at that instant. And then it starts to come down and we could draw in the components of each instantaneous velocity vector on the way down, just as we did on the way up.
So what's the takeaway from this? The fact that we can take two-dimensional kinematics problems because we're dealing with vectors, velocity, acceleration, displacement are all vector quantities. So we can split them up into components and we can treat the X motion and the Y motion, the horizontal and vertical motions independently. So we're used to solving one dimensional kinematics problems. Now we can solve a two dimensional kinematics problem because we split up the motion into two one dimensional problems, a horizontal direction and a vertical direction.